Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday Lunchtime drive through on this Wednesday, June the 9th, 2021. It is uh, summertime. Well, it's almost summertime, and it's heating up across the country, and everybody is excited about traveling and uh, doing all the fun things, certainly, that we didn't get to do last year because of COVID-19. And I know you all have big plans for this summer and probably the rest of the year. And that is a perfect segue into our topic today, the non-financial side of retirement. As I tell clients, well, I don't tell them, I ask them all the time, what is the point of saving up all that money if not to spend it and have a little bit of fun later on down the road? Uh, a lot of financial advisors don't talk about that side of retirement. They just want you to save, save, save and invest, invest, invest. Here at Chapelwood Financial, we want you to spend it. I mean, why'd you work all those years to make your kids wealthy? Probably not. So uh, for those of you who are new, my name is Damon King. I'm a certified financial planner, professional and wealth management specialist with Chapelwood Financial Services. And I'm the lead instructor for Chapelwood University, which is the educational branch of Chapelwood Financial. And today I am so honored to welcome our very special guest, his name, is and if i can get my slides kevin to go there we go his name is kevin lyles he is a licensed attorney as you can see there jd means jurist doctorate for those of you who don't know uh, those acronyms but he's also a chartered retirement planning counselor and a certified retirement coach and kevin is a uh, he's a retirement coach and head of education with another really great group called the rock retirement club uh, there are chapters all across the country and people that come together on a monthly basis uh, to discuss all things retirement. He's an author and speaker. Uh, he also has a monthly segment on the Retirement Answer Man podcast, which is one of the top financial podcasts in the country. If you haven't ever, ever, haven't ever had a chance to listen to that, uh, he hosts the monthly Coach's Corner on that podcast. And Kevin's big thing, his his passion is helping retirees and aspiring retirees combine the sound financial plan that you probably already have with the structure and purpose in your life that you may not have so that you can increase your chances for a successful retirement. And he's here today to talk about the non-financial side of retirement. So Kevin, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much, Damon. It's uh, great to be with you. Well, they're still talking about your visit to the Rock Retirement Club. So well, I thanks was, very much. Well, I was very honored to do that, and uh, I, I appreciate being invited, and I appreciate you accepting our invitation here to uh, to uh, talk with our folks today. So, I just want to start right out of the gate because we don't have a lot of time today. But why is it so important for people to focus on the non-financial side of retirement? Well, that, as you said, that's really what it's all about. That's why we've saved all that money and we've worked so hard to get there. And it's, it's really critical that you spend at least as much time planning on the non-financial side as I know you've planned with, with Damon or your, your financial advisor on the financial side. And a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, and we find that is the case as well. In fact, it's kind of interesting, Kevin, and you probably see this a lot in the coaching that you do with your clients. Most of the people we work with, they've got the money. The money's not the issue. They've saved up a million plus or multi-millions. They have a very low probability of running out of money. It's that, okay, what comes next, right? What do I do with all of that? Can you kind of speak a little bit in your experience when you talk about the non-financial aspects of retirement, what would you say are the one or two big areas that people really fail to plan the most for when it comes to retirement? And more importantly, what do they find that kind of surprises them or that is unexpected and they're unprepared for as they venture into retirement? Sure. And let me jump on that last piece about the unexpected part. The unexpected part is I think a lot of us go to retirement with the wrong attitude about it. In other words, we think of retirement as an event, you know, leaving our career. But it's really not. It's really the start of a new phase of life. Mm -hmm. And given how long people are living today, it's going to be one of the biggest phases of your life. 
And so that's why I became a certified retirement coach to try to help people think through, you know, it's just too big of a piece of your life to just let happen. You know, a lot of people just think about the leisure activities and sure you have a lot more time for that, but that doesn't really make for a fulfilling life, just leisure. You know, leisure is great and it needs to be a big component, but there needs to be some other things that give you meaning and purpose. And I think that's to the other part of your question. I think that's the biggest thing that people who are successful at retirement have is a lot of meaning and purpose in their life. And the folks that don't have it, and to tell you the truth, from the clients I've coached over the last few years, more people who fail at retirement are failing on the non-financial side. It's very rare I talk to anyone who's failing on the financial side. So when you say failing on the non-financial side, can you give some examples of what, what exactly do you mean by that? Sure. So let me, let me just, and, and our listeners who are, who are already retired will know this. So you wake up the first day after retirement and it's wonderful because you didn't have to get out of bed when you did. You chose to. And you've probably got a few things on your list that you want to do. Maybe it's a trip somewhere, or maybe it's a home maintenance project or home improvement project that you've been putting off the last few years. In any event, you have what we call the retirement honeymoon. And that can last from three months to a year or two. But then after that, a lot of people find themselves getting bored with retirement. And, and sort of the, the feeling is, is this all there is? And those are the people that I'm talking about have failed because they haven't really sit down to think about what is meaningful to me, what gives my life purpose, and make sure they're pursuing that in retirement. Yeah. No, I, and I'm so glad that this is what you focus on because that's what we find as well that, yeah, people generally have that trip. They've got the home renovation. They've got the project. They've got something lined up. But the reality is they go out and they get it done. They've so, they've so dreamed about it for so long. They go out, they get it done, and they haven't even finished their first full year of retirement. And there's this survey or a study that was done uh, at Michigan State University, and we reference this a lot on a radio show, where it talks about, Kevin, that people who retire early, there's this, there's this belief out there that early retirement is the dream of every American, right, to retire early. But there's a strong correlation between early death and early retirement because they've not given enough consideration for these, what do I do next considerations. That's right. A life without meaning and purpose usually ends shorter. And it ought to be just the opposite, right? You, right. you get away from a stressful career early. And I did this. And so I'm living this. You know, I retired at 55 from my main career. And I did that honeymoon phase for a few months. And then I looked ahead and said, boy, what else am I going to do? What's going to really excite me? How can I give back to the world? And I knew I liked to counsel people. I had done that as a lawyer. And so I decided to start helping people out with retirement. So I'm doing it as much for myself as I am for my client. Well, that's good. And, and to that point, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just like in uh, any other uh, Wednesday lunchtime drive through if you've got questions, now you've heard that Kevin doesn't just walk, he doesn't just talk the talk, he's walking the walk as well. He is teaching the exact things that he practices in his own retirement. So if retirement is just around the corner for you, or you are retired right now, and you're struggling with this, what do I do next? What's my next chapter? And ask a question today. You can do that in the Q&A section uh, in your little toolbar or the chat section, or if you just have a comment, something you want to share with the group. But if you've got a question for, uh, for Kevin today, please put that here and I'll be monitoring those questions and I'll be happy to ask those. Uh, you know, what do you do? How do you, uh, how do you counsel clients, that sort of thing on a certain issue? Kevin, while we're waiting for some questions, what I love about your approach is that it is simple. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of like us. We believe simple is better. You've got to be able to understand things and you've got a really great tool that you use. And I hesitate to even call it a tool uh, the way you just, you describe it much better, but it's this life energy worksheet that you share with clients. Can you kind of take us through this a little bit and how this helps to measure people's readiness for retirement? 
Yeah, and you know, Damon, this this applies equally to people who are still in the middle of their career, but it's a great retirement planning exercise that I have reti uh, pre-retirees do. And so what I ask them is to look at, and these six uh, life arenas, we call them, career life arena, family, relationship, self, spirit, or spiritual, and leisure. And so let's talk just briefly about what those are. So career and work, you may say, well, I'm retired, so doesn't that go away? And my whole point is no. What we're talking about here, while you're working, your job or your career is a big part of your life, clearly. And you dedicate a lot of energy to it. So that's why I call this a life energy chart. So what I ask people to do is think about their current life and go down and assign a percentage of how much of their life energy they're applying to each of these six areas. I use the term life energy instead of time because obviously how much time you're spending at these things matter. But we all know if we look inside ourselves that it's really about how much real attention and energy are we giving to it. So career and work while you're working at your job, but when you're retired, it might be a volunteer position. It's whatever your primary purpose in life is, that's how much I, you wanna to devote to it. Your family life arena, that's an easy one. Your, your spouse, if you're married, your extended family members, how much time and, or, or uh, your life energy are you giving them? Then relationships are relationships we have with everyone outside our family. And it doesn't just mean our close friends, it's even casual acquaintances. Maybe it's the, the person behind the counter at the coffee shop you go into every day. It's those relationships you have that make our life so fulfilling. The self-life arena is how much time we spend taking care of our bodies and our minds. And obviously that tends to go up when we retire. Mm -hmm. Spiritual, it, for many people, this is religion, but for many other people, it's just about your relationship with a higher power, you know, something bigger than yourself. And then finally, leisure, that's what we all think about in retirement. For an activity to be a leisure activity, it needs to be a diversion from something. And that's the problem a lot of retirees face is they just fill their days with all leisure activities and suddenly those activities lose their diversionary capability because you're not diverting from anything. So this exercise is your current life how much, what percentage of your life energy are you spending in each of these six areas? And that adds up to 100%. And then I want you to think ahead to when you're going to retire or if you're already retired, what's the ideal percentage of life energy you would like to devote to these? So obviously people who are still working, you know, I've heard people give career and work 90% before which just seems way out of balance, right? And their family usually takes the, the, the brunt of that. You know, they're suffering because of it or the self-life arena is suffering. They're not spending enough time on taking care of themselves. They don't get their medical checkups. They don't exercise. Yeah. They don't eat right. So think about the ideal life and assign percentages to those and then figure out a plan for how you're going to get from present to ideal. And the way you do that is, let's say your self-life has been 5% presently, but you want it to be 25% in retirement. Well, you need to come up with some activities for self. And that's the exercise, is just to imagine what's the ideal percentage, how much time and life energy do you want to devote to each of these six life arenas in retirement? Yeah. And that the, the real purpose of this, Damon, is not to worry too much about the numbers. It's to worry about the direction you need to move your life. Yeah, it's, it, I think of this a lot like uh, the gold buckets that we use for our clients. Okay, so on the financial side, and it's, it's funny that we're sitting here talking about the non-financial side because we have a radio show and soon a television show called It's All About the Money, honey. Um, <laughs> And that's a great line, okay? And all of the things that we want to do in retirement, they take money for the most part. 
you know, a lot of the things that we want to do. But it is absolutely true, Kevin, that there are so many things that are not about the money. And so I love that this, kind of like the gold buckets, help you to see the balance of where your money is. And are you out of balance in any one area? This life energy tool really helps you to zero in on where am I out of balance? You know, where, where have I focused too much time? You mentioned career. Where have I not focused enough? Do you find that there is a trend among, you know, well, let me just break it down. Like, I, I never like to get into the, a battle of the sexes, okay? The women versus the men. But do you find that women or men are better at having balance than one of the, than over the other. Now I'll tell you what my experience is, but I want to hear what your experience is. Who do you think has a better control of this balance, this life energy balance? Yeah. You know, if, if, if I've seen a difference between the sexes, it is that women tend to be better at the relationships and at family and they're closer, but they're just as out of balance as men. They're just out of balance in different categories, okay. but they certainly do. A lot of men really don't maintain many relationships outside of work, you know, their coworkers and people they meet on their job. And so when they get to retirement, they realize I've got no one to go do all these leisure activities with. <laughs> and so that's a big one. And and so when I have people look at this life energy chart, and let's just say, for example, you, you're currently at 5% on relationships and you want to take it to 20. And same thing for leisure. You're, you're zero on leisure now and you want to take leisure to 40% in retirement. Well, one thing I'll tell them to do is, okay, call some friends, arrange a regular game of golf or tennis or whatever activity. Maybe it's just walking through the woods and hiking, whatever you like to do, do that with people that you want to build friendships with and maintain friendships with. And that's the way you, you sort of kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's really smart. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got any questions for Kevin uh, about how to have healthy life energy balance, because uh, he's practicing it right now, and I'm sure for him, it's a continual effort and work to maintain that balance, but he does it in his own life and he coaches others to do it. And if you're struggling with that, or you want to make sure you get started off on the right foot before you get to retirement, please ask that question. And uh, it looks like we do have our first question coming in here. So uh, Kevin, we've got a question from Eddie. Eddie asks, how did you go about figuring out your purpose in life after you retire youngish? I plan to retire at 56 and I won't need to work any longer for money, but I'm not sure what I will do with my life at that point. Don't say don't retire because after 35 years, I'm ready to leave my job. So, uh, you know, what advice uh, do you have for Eddie? And it sounds like Kevin, you were kind of in this same boat when you retired. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's what a great question, Eddie. And number one, you don't have to figure it out before you retire. I think that would be ideal, but I didn't. I didn't know I was going into retirement coaching before I retired. And I needed to decompress a little bit. I had a stress-filled job. And so I, I just needed to think. But the beauty of not having to work for money any longer is if you want to do some work and you think 56 is too young to not do any more work, you've got that Puritan work ethic that so many of us have. Well, then what I would encourage you to do is think about what is the ideal work that you could do? What would really cause you to jump out of bed and hit, hit the ground running every morning? Would, would really fill your, your spirit and pursue and, and then decide, and how much of that do you want? You probably don't want those 10 or 12 hour days that I know you've been working if you plan to retire at 56. You've been working very hard. So think about how much work do you want to do but what would really give purpose to you in your life? And, and let me talk a minute about the difference between meaning and purpose, because a lot of people, they use the words interchangeably. And what I mean by meaning and meaningful are activities that are important to you. Doesn't have to be important to anyone else. You're the sole arbiter of what is meaningful 
in your life? What brings you satisfaction and pleasure? And, and it's usually to be meaningful, it's you're using your unique gifts. As a person, each of us have unique set of gifts and talents. So what activities bring you meaning? And then purpose expands upon meaning and it involves looking outside yourself. How can you make a difference in your world? And notice I said your world, not the world, because a lot of people get really hung up on this purpose thing because they think it needs to be some grand gesture. You know, you need to cure, cure poverty or, you know, feed the poor. And it's, it doesn't have to be that. It's wonderful if it is. And certainly the people that go do those things, you know, my, I tip my hat to them. But in your world, how can you make a difference? In other words, is, is there some need in your community and it can be big, it can be small, but it's something that has meaning to you that you can do. And then you can work either as a volunteer, you can mix volunteer and paid work. A lot of people like to start businesses, whatever. That's what I would encourage you to do and just make sure it's something you love. Yeah, especially no one, yeah, why would you go spend time doing stuff that you feel is a drudgery or that you have to do, you know? Um, that's part of why you hear people say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I know it's kind of trite, but it's really true. It's sure you know, is. It's a bonus if you're getting paid to do it. But in the case of retirement, um, your payment is seeing the, the difference that you're making in whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's volunteering in your community for a nonprofit. Um, I know many clients that, what they enjoy doing is they enjoy going and they they cut the grass for their church. You know, that's their contribution. Um, I've got one client named Lois who loves to go and read. She helps uh, young women who are who have been incarcerated and now they've been released and they're coming back into society. She helps them to learn to read and she does tutoring and that sort of thing. That's how she gives back. Um, all of you have something that you love, some cause that you love, and uh, could very easily go out and do that. Uh, or start another business. I love that you said that, Kevin. Um, so many people, so many of my clients find that, you know what, I retired, but I didn't just suddenly forget everything I knew. And a lot of people go out and earn more money as a private consultant working a few hours a week than they ever did in their full-time job. Yeah, yeah so. a, a great purpose in retirement is not only to start a business and something you've always wanted to do, but to be able to leave that as a legacy to your yeah. family. Just think about that. Your children can take over that business later. You don't have to just sell it, although that's fine if that's what it is. But, you know, that can give you a tremendous purpose in life. I, I, I often caution people two things about starting a business. One, Make sure you don't put your financial security at risk. Right. You know, some people will go out and spend their entire IRA on some new franchise. And as we know, most new businesses fail. <laughs> but two, don't work more than you want to work. Right. In other words, don't let the business take over your life. And that's that's a lot of people do that when they start a new business. So set parameters for yourself as to what are your goals for that business? And then make sure you stay within those parameters. Yeah. Well, Kevin, uh, you know, we do have just a few minutes here. Tell us a little bit about the Rock Retirement Club uh, and, and how do people get uh, uh, linked up with, with your group uh, if that's what they want to do? Sure. The, the Rock Retirement Club, it's been around about three years now. We're in our, in our third year and it is a online paid subscri subscription membership. And we have a lot of education, both on the financial and non-financial side of retirement. We bring in a lot of fun guests in the retirement area, like Damon King <laughs> came to join us. And we have a lot of others, both on the financial side and the non-financial side, and, and a lot of tools and things to use. But really, the best thing about it is we're a little over 500 members now, and it's just great to have to be able to share ideas and thoughts and ask questions of people who maybe are at the same stage you are at or maybe a year or two ahead of you and learn from each other and that's the community part of it is is what I think is the best 
we have a lot of local meetups around the country throughout the year just to get together. And then we have an annual conference uh, that takes place in the fall for a couple days, which is educational and social. So it's, it's a wonderful club. You can find out about it at rockretirementclub.com. Uh, we talk about it a lot on the Retirement Answer Man podcast as well. You said that website was rockretirementclub.com. Okay. I am sharing that uh, in the uh, chat there. Uh, I wish it had come across. I didn't paste it as a, as a hyperlink, so it's not clickable. But uh, if you go to the chat, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see there, that's the website, www.rockretirementclub.com. And uh, Kevin, I know you're one of the leaders of the national group. Uh, you're the head of education, I know. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you as a guest. Uh, I'm a big believer in education. I know you are as well. And that's why we've kind of tag teamed uh, with our various groups here. Um, I, I really, truly thank you for having that heart of a teacher, just like I do. Uh, we do have another question that looks like it came up here. So, oh, uh, Wendy has a comment. Uh, Wendy, one of our great clients, she says, uh, great information. Thank you. So thank you again, Kevin. Oh, wonderful. For, thank for you, your, Wendy. For doing yeah, that. Yeah, I love talking, as I know you do too, Damon. I, you know, we have the heart of a teacher and like to help people. And, and this non-financial side of retirement is just as important as financial. Yeah. And if you would like, now, Kevin, is this Life Energy Form, is this something that I could email out to everybody? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, please so share that. If you would like uh, to have a copy of this, I'll tell you what, I'll just send it out to everybody. I've got everybody's email address, so I'll attach it and I'll send this out to you. It's a simple document. It's one page and I love one page. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get that out to you as soon as this is over. And uh, we're recording this as well. And so we'll get this recording up on YouTube. And we'll send this out as well as a link that you can watch later on, because I think there are a lot of great lessons to take out of this. Uh, chief among them that, yes, the money is important. Money is what is required to live the life you want. But once you've got that taken care of and you feel reasonably confident, you've got to make sure that you've carved out energy. I like that you say energy, not time, because we all have the same amount of time, right? 24 hours in a day. So how much energy are you diverting to these areas during that 24 hours? And what is gonna fulfill you? What's gonna make you feel good? What's gonna make you get up every morning and wanna go at it again? Uh, Cause you can only travel so much. There's only so much TV you can watch. Sleeping in only will get you so far. You've got to go beyond that. So Kevin, I wanna thank you very much for uh, agreeing to be our guest today. I know it's a short amount of time, um, that's why these uh, drive throughs are so popular. But thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Damon. And if anyone does this exercise and has a question about it, you know, shoot that question to Damon and he'll get it to me and I'll be happy to talk to you. Yeah. Um, and uh, Kevin, if you're open to it, uh, I'll even hang on here for another few minutes if there are people who uh, have any questions that they want to ask um, about uh, Rock Retirement Club or anything else. Uh, in the meantime, I would be remiss if I did not tell you all about our new television series that launches this weekend. So Sunday, June the 13th, if you're in the Oklahoma City area, we are going to be debuting our new show. It's all about the money, honey, which is basically a 30 minute version of our radio show that airs locally. Uh, it's going to be on KWTV News 9. That is the CBS affiliate in Oklahoma City. It will air every week at 11 o'clock in the morning. And if you've got questions that you would like us to share on a feature on a future episode, uh, we go out every quarter to film new episodes. We've got the first six episodes already filmed, but uh, be sure to check us out. Set your DVR for this Sunday, June the 13th at 11 o'clock in the morning, and you will see our debut broadcast of It's All About the Money, Honey. And of course, if you want to keep on learning, my next Rocky Retirement two-night course is coming up. Thursday, June 17th and 24th, you can go to chapelwood.com, click the big red button in the upper right-hand corner that says enroll in a class. It's $49 to enroll. That's for you and a guest. You get the workbook, you get two people in. So it's basically less than 25 bucks a person. And we're going to cover the five key areas of retirement planning that you need to know. Of course, for my clients, you always get to come for free. So if you ever want to come to one of my classes, we're back at the University of Central Oklahoma, live, in person, no masks required. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> and uh, I can't wait to see you in class uh, coming up just next week. Um, we'll hang around for just a little bit if anybody has any other questions uh, for Kevin. But uh, I want to thank you so much for being on the Wednesday lunchtime drive through today. And uh, it's been fun. We hope that you have a great rest of your week. Stay safe. And we'll talk again soon. Um, are there any other questions that anybody has? Anything at all? All right. Well, okay. I've got a question, Damon. Are you going to put those TV recordings up on YouTube for those of us that live outside of the Oklahoma City yeah, area? We will. In fact, we do have the recordings. We've got all the episodes that we'll post on uh, YouTube, and we will release those once the um, episode has aired. So I look uh, forward to yeah. it. We'll be putting those. And so if you're subscribed on our YouTube channel, that channel is Financial Diva, all one word. Uh, that's where we will upload those. So we'll upload the first episode this coming week after this uh, next first episode airs. So, All right. It does not look like we have any other questions. So, uh, Kevin, thank you so much again today. We appreciate your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And for everybody else, here's to rocking your retirement. Check out the Rock Retirement Club and... Um, to your health and prosperity. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.